Thanks for joining us. I'm Jennifer Meckles. Tonight, one man is dead. Another is still missing after their raft capsized in the Colorado River. This happened in the Yarmany Rapids area yesterday afternoon. This is about two hours west of Denver near Cottonwood Park in Grand County. The Grand County Sheriff's Office says somebody reported a man in the river who was not breathing. First responders gave him CPR. He later died. He was 56 years old and from the Denver metro area. And deputies say a 61-year-old man, also from the Denver metro area, is still missing tonight. They've been looking for him in the rapids yesterday, couldn't find him, and they picked up that search again today. A third man who was in that raft was okay. Deputies say nobody in that group was wearing a life jacket. As the search for that missing rafter continues, 9 News reporter Janelle Finch tells us what river conditions are like right now as warm weather brings more people to Colorado waters. Water experts say this is peak runoff season for our state rivers, which means that runoff is creating faster moving waters, which can be fun for summer activities, but also just as dangerous. On a summer day, a dip in the water is a guaranteed way to cool off. But getting in can sometimes be easier than getting out. So more water in the river can mean more fun, uh, more rapids to navigate. It can certainly uh, uh, be a, a wonderful thing. It can also be dangerous. James Eklund is a water attorney. He says snow melt into Colorado rivers produces stronger flows of water. The Colorado River, where the accident happened uh, yesterday, is running at about 1,300 cubic feet per second. So more than double what you've got going on here. Saturday, the Grand County Sheriff's Office says three people fell out of their raft on the Colorado River. The sheriff says one man got to safety, but another man died. Um, it's obviously a little more turbulent than you're seeing behind me now, um, which has additional risk. Um, the key to any of our waters is to always wear a life vest. Uh, life vest, those personal flotation devices, um, you know, are, are saving grace up here. They're still looking for one missing rafter in the group. It'll be kind of a day-to-day -day effort. Um, sometimes we have uh, quick successful locates in the river and unfortunately sometimes they're delayed. With as fast as waters are moving, safety is all the more important. Unfortunately, this was a tragic incident that happened. Um, but the key message of this is um, we can hopefully save you if you have life vest on or you can save yourself. Um, so put those life vests on. The Larimer County Sheriff's Office says a rafter died on the Poudre River last Thursday. They say that her raft hit a bridge support and got stuck. From the South Platte River, Janelle Finch, 9 News. The Grand County Sheriff's Office tells us this is their first water-related death in that county so far this year. Logan County leaders are still cleaning up some flooding in parts of Sterling today. The emergency manager there says they were able to put sandbags around the houses they had to evacuate. And the county says the water has already started to go down quite a bit from what we saw here yesterday. And they're pumping out the rest of the water. A lot of people have been able to return home today, but they are holding on to some farm animals until next week. A couple of county roads are also still closed. We're moving into the season for extreme heat across Colorado. Today is Global Heat Action Day. The city of Denver is actually getting ready for a long summer ahead. The CDC says excessive heat can increase your body's core temperature. You can get heat illness if you're not careful. The city says they're using a heat vulnerability index to measure which neighborhoods suffer the worst effects of heat so they can focus resources there. Right now, storms are brewing on the eastern plains. Here's some video from just the past hour as meteorologist Corey Reppenhagen drove through eastern plains. Sort of been the story, Lauren, every day. The eastern plains has been the bulk of the damage so far. Yeah, and that's pretty typical for these summertime severe weather storms because the plains is where those storms really get ramping up over that flat land. But it, I would be interested to see how Sterling is holding up because that's one of the areas getting another round of heavy rain today. Outside of that, we did see those temperatures warm quite a bit. 86 degrees so far at DIA. Most of the front range at Eastern Plains was in the 80s. Some areas making it into the 90s, 91 degrees down in Pueblo. The high country was pretty warm as well. Highs in the 60s and 70s and then more 90s this afternoon across the western slope. Now, we will continue to monitor our HD Doppler radar and again, specifically over the eastern plains where we have severe thunderstorm watches, all of this area in blue, and then a few severe thunderstorm warnings. There was one over Sterling that's now being pushed eastward into the Nebraska panhandle, so we're going to continue to monitor these lingering severe weather, uh, severe thunderstorm warnings through the rest of the evening. Outside of that, we do still have some scattered but light showers, a pop-up storm. We also have air quality 
quality alerts that'll be in effect across the urban corridor here all the way until midnight tonight and that's going to be for high levels of ozone. Now as we move ahead to my seven day forecast, we're going to continue to monitor those storms out east. We're going to expect drier warm weather to push in for the next few days and then we do have more storm chances ahead for next weekend. I'll have details on all of that just ahead. Lauren, thank you. Denver police say a young person is in custody tonight for a shooting in Denver. They have not released much information, just where it happened. Last night, North Denver, Bruce Randolph near Gaylord Street, and police do not know the condition of the victim today. Today, we learned the name of the employee who died at an eastern Colorado sugar plant last week. The Morgan County coroner says Tristan Tester died Wednesday at Western Sugar Co-op. He was 27 years old from Brush, Colorado. We're still waiting on the official cause of death from the autopsy report. Deputies say the employees that were working there were likely exposed to hydrogen sulfide gas while they were working in a utility building. Four employees and two firefighters were ultimately treated at a hospital. This week, the owners of the Return to Nature Funeral Home in Penrose, who are accused of improperly storing hundreds of bodies, will be in court. John and Claire Holford will be arraigned on state charges this week. Later this year, they'll be tried on separate federal wire charges. These two have pleaded not guilty to pocketing hundreds of thousands of dollars in federal pandemic relief funds. This month, the Colorado Supreme Court will decide whether Fremont County DA Linda Stanley should keep her law license. She's accused of a couple of things. She's launched a secret investigation allegedly into a judge because she disagreed with his rulings. She's also under fire after her comments about a suspect in another case led to the judge dropping murder charges. William Jacobs was accused of killing a 10 month old baby that he was supposed to be babysitting. And a couple months after charges were filed by Stanley's office, she did an interview with a news station in Colorado Springs. Here's what she said about that suspect back in August. He has zero investment in this child, zero. He's watching that baby so he can get laid, that's it. Without the caring factor, without the love factor, then it's the baby's a pain in the So the judge has now ruled that Stanley's comments in that interview violated the defendant's rights to due process and all the charges against him were dropped. In the battle over her law license, the Colorado Supreme Court will hear a complaint of the Office of Attorney Regulations Counsel filed against Stanley. They will hear that next Monday. The new eastbound 70 I-70 Mount Vernon emergency escape ramp east of Genesee just opened again this morning. CDOT's worked over the last six months to make that ramp more visible for truck drivers in case there's some kind of an emergency like their brakes not working or a mechanical problem while they're driving in the mountains. You'll remember back in 2019, this case, a semi-truck driver lost control of his brakes, ultimately slammed into stopped traffic and killed four people. He did not use the runaway ramp available. CDOT hopes making this ramp more robust will encourage truck drivers to actually use it. Commerce City Police say a victim survived a shooting this week, likely because of his necklace. Police say somebody shot the victim during an argument. The bullet would have gone into the victim's neck, but instead it hit this chain necklace and saved him. Police say it's not real silver, but maybe this is an example why you don't always have to knock a knockoff. The suspect was later arrested on attempted homicide charges.